And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Boston Celtics. All right, we have uh, the ages of the Celtics players on the roster at the start of the season. They're listed below. These are actual numbers. This is a real problem. I uh, did this problem back in the summertime. These were the ages of the players. And we have to find the range, the median, the first quartile, the third quartile, the interquartile range, and any outlier or outliers that may exist. And you can see the team taking a picture before the season. So we have, first of all, to arrange this information right here, it's a mess. We need to arrange it in order. So what I did here, you can see the one, two, three above it. That's just saying how many data values there are. So at the beginning of the season, there's 12 people on the team. And then we have their ages arranged from lowest to greatest. So you can see the tallest guy here. That's Kevin Garnett. He's actually 36 years old. He's the oldest guy on the team. And this guy, conveniently, I think he is actually 34 years old now, Paul Pierce. Um, this is Rajon Rondo. He's someplace over here. I think he's only like 26 years old. Anyway, first thing they ask us for is the range. And, and once we have these data values arranged in order, you can see the number of data values here, uh, it's kind of easy to find the range. The range is just the difference between the highest value, which is Kevin Garnett's age 36, and the lowest value, which is 20 years of age. And this guy right here, he is only 20 years old. He's from Ohio State at 21 to college. So he's a rookie. His name is Jared Sollinger. So we were just doing the 36 years old minus the 20 year old Sollinger. And you can see the range of ages on this team would be 16 years. So that's actually pretty significant when you consider, you know, how well a team gets along. Um, somebody that's 16 years older than you right now could be one of your teachers, you know, so you, you think about trying to play with them on the same team. That can be an issue for a team in terms of chemistry. So when this guy right here, his name is Danny Ainge, he's the guy that helps the Celtics make put the team together. When he's putting a team together, he, he wants to consider the range of ages and how well players get along together because that can determine how much they'll be successful. Um, so the next thing we need to determine is the median. Of course, we got to cross out values until we get to the to the center. It's an order already, so we can cross off the lowest and the highest and keep doing that. All right, and as you're going to see here, we've crossed off five on each side, and we're left with two numbers in the middle. The sixth and seventh data values are in the middle, and that's 26 and 27 years old. So the median age is going to be right in between 26 and 27. So we could say that the median value here is 26.5 years of age. That is the middle value for somebody on the Celtics in terms of how old they are. Now we know the median is 26.5 so the next step is to find the first quartile and we're going to do that by looking at everything from the median to the beginning of the data set so from there to there essentially and you can see here there's going to be six values we have to include this 26 because that really wasn't where the median was the median was 26.5 it was a little bit higher so again we'll cross off values till we get to the middle and since we've crossed off two on each side and we have two in the middle again we're gonna find the middle of this middle and that will be 22.5 years of age and we're gonna do the same thing to get the third quartile so we're gonna to go to the right of the median everything in this area right here so pretty much your data values 7 through 12 is going to be your third quartile and we have two numbers in the middle, so we have to find the middle of this middle. And in the middle of 32 and 34 is 33 years. The last step is to find the interquartile range, which is just uh, third quartile minus the first quartile. So we're going to do 33 minus 22.5. And of course, there's a wolf involved here. You have to line up the decimal path. And since 33 doesn't have a decimal, we add it in, 33.0, and this will be 22.5. And the interquartile range is 10.5 years. Finally, the last thing that this asks us for is any outliers that might exist. And let's just take a good estimate here. 20 would be one possible answer, or maybe 36, because those values are kind of at the extreme ends of the team. You know, 36 being the oldest, 20 being the youngest. It's possible you could have, you know, an outlier here too at you know, the second youngest or here at the second oldest, although less likely. Um, so those are potential answers. They're not necessarily 
going to be the answer. Again, it says that may exist. There might not be outliers in this problem. And the way we're going to figure this out, we would multiply the interquartile range, which is 10.5, by 1.5. Why 1.5? I don't know. It's just um, it's a value that tells you kind of when things are, are fall apart, far apart from each other. So I've multiplied this all out 10.5 times 1.5. And you got to remember we've got two decimals here. So what that means is that we need to slide the decimal over two spaces to the left. So this will equal 15.75. And that makes sense because if you did 10.5 times 1, that would equal 10.5. So we should get an answer that's a little bit higher than 10.5 since we're multiplying by 1.5. And if we multiplied like 10 or 11 times 2, 11 times 2 would be really good too high here. 11 times 2 is 22, and we know 22 is too high because we just made both these factors higher. Once we have this number of 15.75, we're going to be doing something with quartile 1 and quartile 3. So with quartile 1, we're actually going to be subtracting. And so we have 22.5 as our quartile 1. What we're going to be subtracting from it is that number we just found, 15.75. And again, you can tell here, it's important to have a strong foundation of what to do with decimals when you have numbers that don't line up like this. You can always annex a zero. Just make sure your decimals line up one underneath the other. And you can see 6.75 would be an age that's way, way too low to play on the Celtics. That's basically what this is saying. And you can see our youngest player, Solinger, he was 20 years old. So he's not way, way too young by any stretch to be on the Celtics. If we had a 6.75 year old or a 7 year old, something like that, that would be way, way off. And we also want to determine, well, is 36 too high, remember, or is 34 too high? And the way we do that, we take that same number, 15.75, that we created by multiplying our interquartile range by 1.5. And this time we're going to add it with our third quartile, which is 33. So we would do 33 plus 15.75. 75. And again, we need to add zeros over here because otherwise this might not make sense to you. And you can see this is going to equal a very big number. It's going to equal 48.75. And there's nobody on the Celtics, nobody in the NBA right now for that matter, that is 48.75 years old. So we don't have an outlier on the Celtics. There's nobody whose age is way, way too high relative to another person. Because you can see here, the information's kind of spread out. You got a couple of people in their 30s, a couple of people in their late 20s, a couple of people in their young 20s. It's pretty spread out. There's no number that's very different from the rest of the numbers.